Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you're doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our eighth lesson on a given form three mathematics topic called commercial arithmetics two. So we are looking at our fourth aspect on this particular topic, which is called the higher purchase price, usually abbreviated as the HPP. Now, what is higher purchase price? So higher purchase price is simply a mode of payment whereby you pay for the item at a price which is slightly above the uh, cash price and of course you are given better terms of payment because you are allowed to pay for that particular item for a slightly longer period of time we can look at an example let's say uh, a fridge was supposed to be purchased then we let the cash price of that particular fridge to be 10,000 shillings so this one simply means that if a customer shows up to a shop with 10,000 shillings for sure they are going to go home with the fridge so the 10,000 shilling is called the cash price or simply put uh, the marked price of that particular uh, fridge now the person who wants to purchase the fridge may not have the entire 10,000 shillings at that particular time that he or she wants the fridge so let's say uh, they will agree with the owner of the shop that i'm going to pay a slightly a higher amount than the cash price but i want you to give me a better terms of uh, payment so let's say on higher purchase price the fridge will be sold at 10,300 shillings but this particular customer will be allowed to pay for this particular amount for a slightly longer period of time let's say after a period of a uh, three month so this mode of payment whereby the customer is allowed to pay for the item for a slightly longer period of time and is paying an extra amount which is slightly above the cash price this mode of payment is what we are calling the higher purchase price then of course the amount uh, which is above the cash price we call it the occurring charge therefore the higher purchase price is given by the summation of the deposit and of course the total installment remember the deposit is the initial amount that the customer pays before they agree on the monthly installment that that particular customer will be paying therefore we can summarize this formula as the higher purchase price is equals to the deposit denoted by d then of course plus the total uh, monthly installments or simply put the total installment then of course a synonym for deposit is the word down payment so the word deposit and down payment they simply mean the same thing then of course the total installment is usually given by the product of the period of payment which is usually in most cases it is expressed in month then we multiply by the monthly installments therefore we can say that the higher purchase price can also be given by the down payment which is basically the deposit then plus the total installment which is basically the product of the period times the monthly uh, installments then we talk of what we are calling the carrying charge so the carrying charge we've said this is an extra amount that is paid a uh, higher than the cash price or the marked price of an item in order for the customer to enjoy the higher purchase price such that the customer will be allowed to pay uh, for that particular item for a slightly uh, longer period of time we gave a good example here uh, the marked price or simply the cash price of our fridge was 10,000 uh, shillings but on higher purchase terms whereby uh, the customer will be paying for the fridge for a period of three months the customer was allowed to pay 10,000 at uh, 300 shillings therefore if you take the difference between these two so the difference between the higher purchase price and the cash price so of course the difference will be 300 shillings so these 300 shillings is what we are calling the carrying charge this is what we are calling the carrying uh, charge so basically the carrying charge is the amount of the higher purchase price that is slightly above the uh, cash price of that particular item so you can say that uh, the carrying charge mathematically the carrying a uh, charge will simply be equivalent to you take the higher purchase price then you subtract the cash price of the item of course the cash price is also called the uh, marked price of the item in most cases uh, it will also be equal to the buying price uh, of that particular uh, item 
Then we look at what we call the accumulated amount, especially for the case of uh, compound interest. So accumulated amount, whether you are dealing with compound interest or simple interest, it will always be equal to the total installments. Therefore, we are saying that for the case of compound interest, accumulated amount for the compound interest will be equal to the total installments. Of course, we know that total installments is given by the product of the period, then you multiply by each installment. Then, of course, from our previous lessons, we were able to see that accumulated amount for the case of compound interest will be equal to the formula for the compound interest, which is the principal into one plus rate of 100, then, of course, to the power of uh, n. Therefore, we can talk of accumulated amount, that is for the case of uh, compound interest, for the case of compound uh, interest, will be given by, the accumulated amount will be given by the total installments, which is simply equal to the period multiplied by each installment, which must be equal to uh, the total amount for the compound interest, which is equal to the principal into one plus a uh, rate of 100, then of course to the power of n. So the key thing to note here is that the accumulated amount whenever you are dealing with compound interest will always be equal to the total installments, which is the product of the period times each installment, which is equal to the formula for the accumulated amount when you're calculating the uh, compound uh, interest. Then if um, the rate of payment is on simple interest terms, then we say that the amount for the simple interest will always be equal to the total installment, of course, which is equal to the period multiplied by each installment, which is equal to, remember the amount for the case of simple interest will be given by the principal, then plus the simple interest, which is always given by uh, the principal times rate times time, then we divide with a uh, hundred. Therefore, we can talk of the amount, the amount whenever you are dealing with the simple interest will always be equal to the total installment, uh, which of course is equal to uh, the period then multiplied by each installment. So this will be equal to, uh, of course, the principal plus the simple uh, interest. But we know that this can also be given by the principal then plus simple interest is given by the principal times rate times time, then of course divided by 100. So whenever you're dealing with simple interest, uh, the amount for the simple interest will be equal to the total installment, which is uh, principal times each installment, then of course, which is equal to the principal plus the simple interest, which is principal times rate times time, then divided by 100. Then whenever you're applying these particular two formulas, that is the formula for the accumulated amount for the compound interest and also uh, the total amount for the simple interest, then in this particular case, the principal will always be equal to the difference between the cash price, which is also called the market price of the item, then you less or you subtract the deposit or the down payment of uh, the item. So we are saying that whenever you're finding the accumulated amount or simply uh, the total amount, uh, that is for the simple interest and also the accumulated amount for the compound interest, then in this case, for you to find the principal, you simply take the difference between the cash price of the item, which is also called the marked price of the item. Then you subtract the deposit or simply uh, the down payment of that particular item. So the key formulas to note here, one is for the um, a higher purchase price, you take deposit plus uh, total installment. Then of course, if you want to get the current charge, you simply take the difference between the cash price that is uh, the difference between the higher purchase price and the cash price of the item. If you want to get the accumulated amount for the case of um, compound interest, uh, you simply, this will be equal to the total installment, which is equal to the period times each installment, which is equal to the formula for the uh, compound interest. That is the amount, which is P into 1 plus rate of 100 to the power of N. If you want to get the amount for the simple interest, you just note that the amount for simple interest is equal to the total installment, which is equal to the principal plus simple interest, or simply put, the principal plus PRT over 100. Then whenever you are applying these two formulas, remember that the principal will always be equal to the difference between the cash price and the deposit or the down payment. So we check an example on the same, which is our example number 18, which reads that, the higher purchase value of a sewing machine is 25% more than its cash price. 
then the higher purchase term requires a customer to pay 32.5% of uh, the higher purchase price as the deposit followed by nine monthly installment of 1,500 shillings each. So calculate the cash price of the sewing machine. So I'm going to let the cash price of the sewing machine to be X because that is the unknown. So I'll say let the cash price of uh, the sewing machine, let the cash price of the sewing machine uh, be, I let it to be equal to uh, X shillings. So we are letting the cash price to be X shillings. Now on the question, there are some details we are given. We are told that um, the higher purchase price value of the sewing machine is 25% more than the cash price. Remember the cash price is the same as the marked price, which is always equal to the buying price, which is always equal to 100%. Now we are being told that the higher purchase price is 25% more than the cash price. So this one means that higher purchase price will be equal to the cash price. Then of course we add the 25% more. Now, if our cash price is 100%, it means that higher purchase price will be equal to 100%. Then of course we add the 25%. Therefore, the higher purchase price is 125%. That is the summation of 100 and of course the 25%. So it means that if we want to get the higher purchase price of this particular sewing machine, so the higher purchase price will be equal to the higher purchase price is 125% of the cash price. So this will be 125, uh, then of course over 100, then multiplied by or of the cash price of the sewing machine. But we know that the cash price, we denoted it to be X, therefore the higher purchase price will be equal to 125 over 100x. So this is the a higher purchase price of our sewing machine. Now, uh, from the question, we are given some further details. So we are given the details for getting the deposit. We are told that the higher purchase terms uh, require a customer to pay 32.5% of the higher purchase price as the deposit. So it means that our deposit the deposit will be equal to 32.5 percent a percentage is always expressed as 100 of the higher purchase price so this will be equal to uh, 32.5 then of course of 100 of simply means we multiply that is in our uh, mathematics so the higher purchase price so remember our higher purchase price, we got it as 125 over 100 X. So we multiply by 125, then of course over 100 X. So this will be the deposit. So this will be equivalent to, if you take 32.5, you multiply it by 125, you're going to get uh, 40, uh, 62, uh, 462, 46.5. Then of course there's an X. Then we are dividing by 100 times 100. This will give us 10,000. Uh, so this will represent what we call the deposit uh, for this particular uh, sewing machine. Now, having gotten our deposit and the higher purchase price, we can actually simplify this particular equation. So if you take 4062.5 divided by 10,000, of course, the 10,000 is going to shift our decimal a point so four times so this is one two three four so we'll have one two three four so it means that our deposit will be given by zero point four zero six two five x so this is the deposit of the sewing machine now on the question we are further given that um aha uh -huh, the higher purchase terms requires a customer to pay 32.5 of the higher purchase price as the deposit followed by nine months so this is our period so the period of payment was nine months so this is our, our period of payment then um monthly installments of 1500 uh, shillings each so this is what we call the uh, monthly installments denoted by uh, I, so this will be equal to 1,500 uh, shillings. Now we have the details that we need. So the question wants us to find the 
cash price of the sewing machine so in short we just need to solve for the value of x so we look for a formula that is connecting the higher purchase price the deposit the period and the monthly installments that we are given of course the formula will be the formula for the higher purchase price now we know that higher purchase price is equals to uh, the deposit then plus the total installment of course which is equal to uh, the period then of course multiplied by each installment so the higher purchase price we got it as um, 125 of um, 100 uh, x so this is 125 then over 100 x so this one is equals to the deposits we got it as zero points so this was 0 0.40 uh, 625x that is 0 0.40 625x then plus the period of payment was uh, nine months then uh, each installment was 1500 uh, shillings that is 1500 so of course if you take uh, 125x over 100 this will give us the two uh, zeros will shift our decimals twice so we'll have 1.25x uh, being equal to uh, 0 0.40625x then plus if you take 9 multiplied by 1500 you're going to get uh, 13,500 shillings from here I'm going to collect the like terms together so I'll have 1.25x uh, then of course I'll take this one towards the left so this will be minus 0 0.40 uh, 625x is equals to uh, 13,500. So if you take 125, uh, that is 1.25x minus 0 0.40625x, your calculator is going to give you uh, 0 0.84, 0 0.84375. Uh, then of course there is an x which should be equal to 13,000. 500 shillings so for us to solve for the value of x we are going to divide through uh, by the coefficient of x which is 0 0.84375 I also divide this side by 0 0.84375 so of course these two will cancel out so it means that our value of x uh, will be equivalent to uh, 13 a uh, 500 then of course divided by a uh, 0 0.84 a uh, 37 a uh, 5 so this will give us the following so if you feed this on the calculator you get your value of x being equal to so you take 13 500 divided by 0 0.84375 your calculator is going to give you 16 a uh, thousand uh, shillings but remember the value of x was actually the cash price of the sewing machine therefore it means that the cash price the cash price of the sewing machine the cash price of the sewing machine uh the sewing machine is it was uh 16000 16000 shillings Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind to Shon Academy. Thank you very much.